Hey guys, Megan Lynn here, Spiritual Empress. How's everybody? Happy weekend. I'm doing my weekly Aquarius video on Aquarius, the water bearer constellation, kind of where it came from. I can guarantee if you are an Aquarius, you have had this happen to you at least once in your life. You've met somebody, they've asked you your sign, you've said Aquarius, and they've said, oh, so you're a water sign, or oh, so you're a water sign too. No, Aquarius is a ride or die air sign. A lot of people get confused by the depiction of us carrying a water, a boss of water rather. Um, so they get confused, think we're water signs. We are not. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the constellation, where it came from, a little bit why we are the way that we are and why people consider us watery or in relation to water. Um, so I wanted to say thank you to all the new subscribers, likes, comments, shares, anything like that. Email me, wmegan, M-E-G-A-N, 939, at gmail.com. I really appreciate all your guys' emails. They've been a lot of freaking fun, to be honest, so thank you, thank you. I will just get right into it as far as the uh, water-bearing constellation. So as far as Aquarius goes, our name in itself is like the least bougie name ever. It's Aquarius as of in relation to water. So yes, we actually have water in our name, but that's literally all that it means. So where the constellation came from, the Aquarian constellation, constellation is actually the water bearer so it's this person depicted pouring out a vase of water people assume that we are water signs now the actual placement of the water bearing constellation is in the middle of what they call the ocean of the galaxy so we have the Dolphinus constellation right next to us which is Deacon 2 Aquarius right flowing into Pisces so we are actually what they call the god of the ocean so in relation to water yes are we water signs no how that actually came to be in the heavens or be in the sky I'm gonna go into a little bit of Greek mythology I'm not gonna get too much into it because bless you guys this shit just goes on and on and on and then you google that on that on that and I've done so much research I'm gonna kind of keep it as small as I can so basically this in Greek mythology has to do with this Greek Trojan named Galtamine now Galtamine and I say his name his name's super freaking hard to say I'm sorry you guys <laughs> he was super good looking very fair dude he was a soldier a Trojan like I said well Zeus actually took a fancy to Galtamine. So he was immortal. Zeus is like the ruler of all gods. So Zeus took a fancy to him. And what he decided to do was that he wanted Galtamine up in the heavens with all of the gods. Now, if you think about this, like, to be honest, like, Zeus just has a heart on for anything that's good looking and, and young and pretty. Like, that's all he cares about. He, this brother does not discriminate. So if you can wonder where, like, our unconventional, unconventional, like, love styles come from, this is definitely it, y'all. Like, <laughs> so anyway, Zeus had a kind of fancy this guilts me dude so he decided that he was going to transform himself into an eagle and then take him from the earth and bring him up to the heavens so what he did was he actually used that's why the constellation Achilles there is the eagle is that's what he actually used to transform to kind of take him away up into the heavens and then like Zeus is like to me this like creepy old man comes and steals good-looking mortals and then he creates this like fake ass job description and he's like I'm gonna create this new fake ass just fake ass position and and put Aquarius there so he basically made him the cupbearer of the gods which I don't know Aquarius is an opportunist so we'd probably be like yeah bitch I'll do this job up here whatever <laughs> but to me that's a very just like creating a position so your bitch can stay <laughs> at corporate office so that's basically how the water bearer got up in the heavens now the thing with the actual constellation itself is that constellation is very interesting in the way that it doesn't have any very prominent star placements so a lot of the constellations will have like major stars in it or major just points in it. Aquarius does not. It's actually the 10th largest constellation in the sky. So holla number 10. <laughs> but being that it doesn't have any prominent placings, it's actually very fluid. So Aquarius is very fluid in the way that we don't usually have staunch positions on things or are 
methods of uh, truth or methods of being evolve usually. So in some way, Aquarius can be very stubborn, but having no prominent placements in those stars there um, is something very significant. Also, a lot of our star locations in our constellation are actually, um, like I said, they're not prominent, but they're very close to the planet, like hyper close, you guys. So um, in a way, that's how Aquarius kind of has this like kind of removed sense of self as they don't have this like prominent placement, but they also are in the middle of everything. So that's how we always kind of have like a voyeuristic kind of thing is, is comes from that constellation of actually having star placements very close to the planet. So that being said, with the actual water bearer depiction, so a lot of people have different things. I'll do, say a couple of them as far as what the actual Voss and the pouring of the water means. As the Voss is the two different ideas. It's ideas of intellect um, and it's the um, ideas mostly of emotion to be honest. So that's where a lot of people get this confused as like we're water signs. Like we're not because if you think about it, the vase actually contains emotions. So what Aquarius can do is yes, we do contain our emotions, but it's much more than that is that we can actually contain the emotions of others and contain the emotions of outward influences without being directly influenced it. If you think about a vase of water and holding it, you're not getting, you know, wet from holding it in the container. So a lot of people don't understand Aquarius when it comes to how we can actually process emotions. Um, so we actually have this ability from the actual Voss and the pouring of it is that we can actually transmit emotion through language. So that's how we actually pour it out. We can do the pouring out of emotions. Uh, this also gives Aquarius the ability to also pour out the past. So we pour out the past very quickly. A lot of uh, Aquarians, this is kind of what this pouring out allows them to just kind of get rid of things and move on. That's where that nature comes from. Also, what it has to do is the pouring of life. So the if you notice the actual depiction is usually one knelt down or on their knee and pouring out the water, it has to do with modest assistance. So Aquarius, that's where their humanitarianism comes from. The life force energy comes from and the understanding of truth actually comes from holding those emotions in, processing those emotions and then pouring them out and getting them out to the, to humanity in general. So that's where that comes from as far as like, um, it's a modest assistance and it's also um, containing emotions. So because we can do that, we can process them. What a lot of people don't know about Aquarius is they say that we're unemotional and we're detached and bullshit like that. We're really not. We can actually just contain it without being outwardly affected by it. So we can take in everybody's emotional um, outpouring and we can process it and then we can redirect it. So this is how an Aquarius is really good at getting shit done, especially if they're motivated by something. Somebody pisses them off. If so, <laughs> We are really good at containing that and then directing that energy and getting rid of it, putting it towards something or flushing it out. Um, so that's where a lot of that comes from. I can't say what a lot of people don't realize about an Aquarius is with that ability to, again, hold those emotions in is that we process them in a theory, a theoretical idea or concept or language. Uh, so if you go to, for example, if somebody asks you, Aquarius, and I, I bet at least eight out of 10 of you are going to answer a question in a non-feeling way, and I didn't even realize that I would do this, is that Aquarius can have all these emotions in them. They can know how something affected them. But then when they're asked how they felt about it, they create a idea of how that affected them, which is not a feeling. And that's the thing that Aquarius doesn't do is that we hold the emotions, then we process it and then we analyze it and then we can interpret it to you, but it's not going to be the actual feeling itself. That's where it comes from because we're not actually touching the emotion. So what Aquarius has a tendency to do is actually process it and then regurgitate it back out um, in a way that can be understood by others, but it's not necessarily explaining the actual how we feel about it. So I just wanted to talk a little bit today about the Aquarian constellation. Yes, we have to do with emotions. We contain them. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really funny because a lot of people think that we're water signs and we're so not. <laughs>
for so not uh, basically we became to, to have our job because uh, Zeus got horny up there and like I've had a bunch of creepy guys hit on me so I feel ya but uh, I just wanted to kind of explain that a little bit, do a quick video. I've recorded a lot, so I'll be putting those out. But thank you, thank you, everybody. I wanted to explain the water bear a little bit more. If you have questions, please comment, like, share, subscribe, anything like that. And I love you guys. Thank you so much for the support. It's been awesome. And uh, we'll talk soon. Bye.